All right, so in this video, I'm going to <clears throat> unbox my eBay Telecaster guitar um, and probably create a series of videos showing how to build it, how a normal guy, non-luthier, builds it. There's a bunch of videos uh, how to take one of these if you're a luthier and make it awesome, but uh, I'm just going to show you how a normal guy does it. Um, why build a Telecaster copy or why build one of these? Well, one of the things I've noticed throughout the Fender line is if you get the Squire or you get the Made in Mexico or Made in Korea or Made in China or the American to, you know, Telecaster or even Stratocaster for that matter, matter, they're hit or miss on the sounds. You can pick up um, a Squire and it sounds better than the, the one that costs 10 times as much. And uh, I've done that several times. And so looking at Telecasters, I was always hesitant to pull the trigger buying one of the expensive ones because you never knew how it was going to sound. A perfect case in point, I had a buddy who had a Made in Mexico Strat. Bought it, things sound awesome, played the heck out of it, but he always wanted an American standard, so he went and bought an American one and paid three times as much for it, and the thing was a dud. It sounded terrible, so didn't want to have that happen, so I'm going to build my own. Um, this is going to be a cheap eBay parts caster, more just to familiarize myself with the process than trying to build the ultimate guitar. Uh, my end game is after I get this done is to buy a part, you know, build a parts caster from a company like Warmoth and um, put it all together like, you know, really nicely. But I want to get familiar with the process and if I screw up on a $65 eBay guitar, it doesn't matter. So the brand is a moon, I guess. I've opened this already once before. Um, I ordered a new uh, Graph Tech tusk nut because those are cheap and make a heck of a difference. This one came with an assembly manual. Got the body here. This is basswood. Smells like basswood. You got all the electronics. Uh, one cool thing about this, this bridge plate is it came drilled for all the string holes if you wanted to do body through. Most of these don't show up body through. But this one came drilled either way, so I've got some ferrules on the way to be able to put them on the back side. Um, put all this junk here. <clears throat> so one of the first things I wanted to do was check the fit to the neck because some of these have been pretty terrible. Spoiler alert, I already know how it fits. But this is a maple with rosewood fingerboard. I mean, there's some... Could have done a little bit better job sanding it, but it doesn't look terrible. So the fit on this guy, I'll turn this around, makes it easier for you guys to see. The fit on this guy is about, you know, it's not perfect. Let's face it, it's a little, a little loosey goosey there. And mainly it looks like this edge is nice and square with here but this bottom edge, you can see there's a gap there. And it's, you know, it's sizable. So one of the things I did was I went to Lowe's and bought veneer. And so I'm gonna take a piece of veneer and put it in here so that it makes that neck joint a lot tighter. Um, yeah, one of the other things I wanna do with this guitar is, you know, if you looked at the Modern Player or any of those, they don't have all the features I wanted, so I wanted one with the arm relief, so I'm going to do an arm relief on it, and then I wanted one with the belly cut, so I'm going to do I'm gonna do the relief there on this too, and yeah, just have fun with it. I'm going to route the edge a little bit, because this is kind of a sharp, sharp corner. So, yeah. Alright, so what I've gone and done here is just cut a little piece of this veneer off, and put it right here. And what we'll do is we'll fit the neck and see how much better it is here. Oh, there we go. That's way better. Okay, so now the neck is solid. So next up, I got to glue that in there, and that takes care of that problem. Okay, so this veneer edging was 6 bucks for the whole roll, and it says basically that you iron it on. So sure enough... You're supposed to get a piece of aluminum foil, put your iron on cotton setting, 
and just heat it up until it melts the glue. Puts it in there. Being oak, it's harder than basswood, so figure it'll be pretty good. All right. Well, that is glued in there pretty good. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so I glued a second piece in here because I want to make it really tight, and I've got a little sanding block. I'm going to sand that down. And I glued a little piece in the radius there, and I'll work that as well because the radius has had a little bit of a little bit of a uh, uh, bigger radius, you know, here than on here. This is a little tighter, so I wanted to fill that in a little bit. So I'm going to work that, but one of the things about that veneer is you can usually you can usually just use a razor blade to take the top part of it off. Yeah, see there. saw it down with a piece of razor blade and then yeah work work on continuing fitting this neck and make sure that's a super tight joint like right now it won't go so I've got to sand just a little bit more off and it should be perfect all right to speeding the process up I busted out my old Dremel with the sanding drum because you know I'd put too much shim there on purpose but look at this thing now it is absolutely tight um let's see if i can get the picture up there you can see that the joint right there at the fingerboard is nice and tight so yeah that's going to work much better i mean it's got a little bit of resistance to come out so should be just about perfect so next and you can see here you know nobody will ever know once it's painted and stuff but yeah just a little bit of oak shim there in the corners I mean you can't expect perfection for $65 I mean this is a kit you got to take it from the standpoint that you're gonna do it for for fun um, and hopefully have something that sounds decent at the end of it yeah I mean you can always upgrade the pickups and, and whatnot so I mean yeah so the next step I'm gonna mark out our forearm cut and our uh, belly cut and maybe get to work on those Okay, so what I've done is I've marked out the belly cut and the uh, and the arm cut here. And the advantage of those is you're sitting here, you know, you don't have a sharp corner with your arm hitting on it. And then same thing here with your belly, as some of us gain over the years. It's uh, easier to pick up to a guitar that doesn't have the square corner here. So that's the advantage of doing both of those. I just kind of eyeballed it, you know, put it up against me and marked it. Um, here I made sure I had about three quarters of an inch the whole way and then tapered it back. Here I wanted to, uh, same thing, I made sure I had three quarters of an inch. And then uh, I only wanted about a half an inch relief here. So now I'm going to bust out the old hand planer and see if that helps. If not, uh, it's on a belt sander and uh, bring it on down. All right, so 20 minutes later, and me in full snowman mode. The easiest way to do this is to attack it with a belt sander with 80 grit on it. And uh, check this out. Ah. So literally, nice contour. I gotta go back through and hit it with, you know, finer grits of sandpaper, obviously. But nice contour for the, for the belly cut. Then here's the arm cut right here. It goes down a half an inch. Nice contour. It feels real comfortable when you hold it. So I'm happy with it. And beauty of basswood is it is so soft that you can carve through there in no time. So next time I'll show you how to cut the neck and we'll deal with that. <laughs> 